Arvind is the uh, founder and CEO of uh, uh, of Glean. He founded Glean in 2019, right? To, That's uh, right. To make it easy to find information uh, in companies. Uh, but prior to Glean, Arvind co-founded another extraordinary company called Rubric. So you co-founded Rubric in 2014. Um, that's a company that's on its way to be, you know, being public and and Glean in 2019. Uh, I mean, two extraordinary companies, both within a period of, of a decade. Um, this is really rare. And, you know, I wanted to just get right into it. Um, you know, what are the lessons? What, what did you learn? Like, what's most important? One thing that I learned, like, you know, building a company, it feels hard. But I think if you keep working, things start to, you know, happen. So I think, like, whoever... Whoever is actually having, you know, second thoughts and like, you know, feeling like, oh, this is too hard. I think, you know, things will get easier maybe. I mean, sometimes people say things never get easier, but I feel like, you know, things happen if we persist and if we keep working. So that, that's, that's sort of one learning that I had because I went through the same journey when I started Rubric <coughs> for the first six months, for the first nine months, I kept thinking that, you know, did I make a big mistake? So wh and why is that? What, what happened in the first six months? Well, partly nothing happens. Nothing. You know, you don't, you know, you don't, you know, the, you know, you, you don't get, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't get customers because you don't yet have a product. You know, nobody's going to actually pick up your phone. Like you don't try to talk to them. You know, you know, you're a nobody. Like you know, they're not interested in spending time with you. You go from so, working on billion user products to like. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I, and I have some really interesting, you know, uh, learnings to share from there. But. But so I think that that's my you know that's the number one thing that I like you know these days whenever somebody asks me for advice that's the one thing that that I tell them is that don't don't give up don't lose hope you know just persist and you know if you if you keep working on on a problem ultimately the solution arrives and things work. Um, second second thing I would say is that the company is all about you know its people, and you have to build a really good team. I've I've seen entrepreneurs who say that yes you know I have this great idea. Um, you know, this is this is the business problem I want to solve, and I ask them, you know, who you know, you know, what's your team? Who are you working with? And they say that, oh yeah, like you know, I have I have, I have three people who are part time in Pune working on this with me. And I said that doesn't work. Like you have to, you have to actually have folks, like you know, really really world class. Uh, you know, initially your company is not about your idea; it's actually about the people, and. And, and 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 you know building a great team is hard and and again you have to, you have to work very very hard to um, you know I I spent like for example the first one year of Glean I was a recruiter that was my my main role I was a recruiter for the company I didn't actually get to write code because you know there are other people who do that better than me and and they wrote it and my my job was to recruit you know I'm on LinkedIn connecting with all the engineers uh, spending most of my day on that trying to convince them about why, you know, they should actually come and join Glean. Um, so that's, that's one lesson. Second is the, you know, the journey is hard. My, the, my second year was actually my role at the company changed and I was the SDR for our company. That, that was the thing that I spent the most time on, uh, the second year of our company, because now we had a product that we were ready to actually... So calling on go customers. And, yeah, so but calling you, didn't, you didn't come from a revenue background, right? And at Rubrik, uh, Arvind, you were more on the... Yeah. You're building the product and the tech. That's right. Now all of a sudden you had to. So talk a little bit about that because a lot of our founders. Yeah. That's something that they really. Yeah. Wish they didn't have to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I so so I'm an I'm an engineer by training, and I, I think I still feel and identify it, you know more as an engineer, not as a CEO, and so that was the first time I had to do it. Like you know, I I've, I've actually, I, and initially like you know I felt that this is this is. Uh, this is so hard and this is something that I just absolutely don't want to do. Like I'm actually pleading with people, like trying to actually get, the, you know, give me, you know, half an hour of their time so that I can share them what our product is. Um, but, but over time, like, you know, I, you know, like I, I felt like, you know, I started to actually enjoy it. Um, you know, you know, enjoy first just the challenge. Like I think I just, I, I, I dig that, like something that's hard. Like, you know, I, I, I have this sort of, you know, drive within me to, to go and try to solve it. But second, I think it's, there's a lot that you learn from talking to people, talk, you know, going through these processes. You know, when I would get time from folks, um, the, there was, there's an art, there's an art for how you, uh, you know, talk to customers. Like initially as an engineer, I was like, you know, I would talk to them and I would just be excited about telling them about our, about our product. <clears throat> not, really, <clears throat> not really listening to them 
what what they need. I was actually more interested in telling them what I had, and over time I learned those skills. So, so I think I I I would say that as, as engineers, like I think it's it's also great to ultimately acquire those skills. Like you know, uh, go and understand like you know what's the right sales process. Like how do you actually um, convince customers to um, to buy products from you? You know these experiences help you. Like you know, because you you're not going to do that for a long time. As, as if you're a engineer or a product person. Um, Ultimately, you'll hire, um, you know, sales leaders and folks who are going to do those things for you. But you'll be able to lead them much better if you actually go through some of that experiences yourself early on. So for me, it was great learnings. Like now, I feel like I do know a little bit about, like, you know, how to sell. Great, awesome. Those are a bunch of good lessons. Uh, now let's let's focus on Glean. Um, where did the idea for Glean come from? Tell us a little bit about. It. Yeah. So the idea for Glean came at Rubric. Um, we. We were actually quite fortunate at Rubric, you know, grew, you know, we grew fast as a company. We were about, you know, more than 1,000 people in four years, uh, which is incredible. But as we, as we had that hyper growth, we were, we were growing fast because we had a huge market and we had a good product. And so we wanted to, you know, do a land grab. And so we grew fast. And, but as we, as we sort of reached that scale, we realized that, you know, work was not happening anymore in the company. Uh, people were struggling, productivity was low, an engineer, you know, you know, that was writing, you know, 300 lines of code in a day before, you know, now I was writing 50 lines of code. Uh, same for salespeople, like they're not able to sell as much. So we're going through like, you know, big struggle, like, you know, and, and some of it is natural, like as you, as you grow, you know, become a large company, things sort of start to slow down, there are more discussions, there are more processes, but we felt there was more to it. And, and so, so we would ask people, like, you know, part, part of building a company is always learning from your team, about what things are broken and how we can fix them. So in our pulse surveys, we would ask people. Like that was one of our questions: was what can we do better? What are the what are the way you know what are things coming in in the way of you know you doing good work? And the largest complaint that we would see from people was people saying that yeah I cannot find anything in this company. I don't know where to go and look for information when I need that, and I also don't know who to go and ask for help uh, when I need help. And so this was a big problem. And now, you know, I being, as you mentioned, like, you know, I worked at Google for a long time. I'm a search engineer. So when people are saying, you know, we can't find things, the first first thing that comes to my mind is that, hey, we should actually have a search product. I was not surprised because we built in this modern SaaS era. We had 300 different SaaS applications that our business was using. And is know, that the core using. of the problem? The companies have like hundreds of these SaaS applications yeah, the, siloed? Yeah, there's, there is, you know, there are the data silos that, you know, these, you know, large number of applications create, but there's also just simply, there's, there's a lot of knowledge. And knowledge, you know, we're not in the, the you know, knowledge is, is not something that you really keep up to date. Like, you know, you don't curate it, you don't delete, you know, out of date, stale information. And, you know, you just keep accumulating. Like there's, the knowledge growth is exponential in companies. So ultimately you land in this space where there's so much information fragmented across so many places and it's hard to find those things. So, so this was the problem that people were facing. I was facing it. You know, I had an assistant, like, you know, like whenever I needed something, I would just ask her that, hey, go find this for me or, you know, bring the person who, who works on this so that I can talk to them. So I had that luxury to actually have some assistance. You know, she would do, you know, she would have all the struggle, but, but I sort of understood the problem. So we tried to buy, buy a product for this. We said like, you know, let's, let's go buy a search engine that can connect, you know, all of our company data. And, and we realized that there's nothing to buy. There's mm. no product. Interesting. And, and so that's, that's sort of what got me excited. And then ultimately, you know, we decided to build Glean. Got it. Uh, now, when you started Glean, actually both Rubrik and Glean, right? You spent almost two years building the product. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, you, you know, in, in sort of the modern era of startups, which is, you know, get something out there, iterate fast. That's not, not at all what you did, right? So, Maybe talk a little bit about that, Arvind, you know, this idea of building very deep products, taking the time. Maybe talk a little bit about that, because I think it's so important for uh, for founders, especially building, you know, like deep products. Yeah. The Well, I mean, from a desire perspective, like, you know, I wish we also built a product in three months and brought it to customers. So sometimes, you know, it becomes hard um, to do that, but but... I, so I would not advise anyone to take more time, you know, to go and build, build the product. If you can actually bring, if you can build some, you know, build something, you know, which adds value, the faster you can and, you know, you know, that you can bring it to your, you know, your early users, your partners, the better it is. So, so, so 
but but it's okay like sometimes you know you you know you you also have to be you have to be careful and balance like you don't want to actually take something which which is not good enough even if you know you're taking it to your closest you know friends you know who are going to be your customers or design partners you don't want to underwhelm them you know on you know on on day one that's that's my philosophy um and so so you have to be careful you you want to get feedback early but you want to actually always tell you know your customers that you're doing something special something yeah. something something good um first impression you know as people say like you know is 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 the most important um but i think i think like when the challenge is larger like for for us the reason you know we took uh more than a year in both cases to actually bring you know our product to our customers the um <clears throat> there are different complexities like in 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 the rubrics example you know we it was a, it was a complicated system you know with hardware uh with the software layer running on it um and the like you know building you know a lot of integrations with different enterprise systems so the you know we 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 try hard we try hard to actually figure out what is the mvp you have to you, you so we you know we we never sort of made our mvp unbounded right. we try to keep it small like it's just another i guess you know it's unfortunate or you know you can say that you know take you know still takes us you know so long to actually do it got it um yeah. now let's maybe shift gears a little bit to uh, yeah. gtm right um yeah. so you could have gone down plg mm-hmm. but you decided to go down the enterprise sales path yeah um why did why did you pick the enterprise sales path i mean that was obviously also the harder path for you because you didn't come from yeah yeah i mean the i i think you know plg is is uh is really appealing but but if you think about the stages of the company you don't have to think about plg in my opinion you know while you're building the product the first year it doesn't matter whether what whether your sales motion is going to be plg or you know tops down what you are looking for is the first 10 to 15 customers who are going to be using your product and and you're going to actually be spending time with them directly um so so it's not a it wasn't a relevant question so we didn't think too much about it in the first uh 10 to 15 months but then as as you start to learn from them you know we realized that plg would not work for us so it was just a and why is that the same more so for for us so the our product you know it's a it's a search engine uh it's like google or chat gpt you know inside your company so for it to be useful even to one user in your company it has to connect with all of your company information because like you know i have i have access to a lot of information inside my company if i want this one place where i can go and find it anything i have to actually do that so first of all it's so it's infrastructure heavy like to actually add value to one user you have to index all of your company information so that was that so that's one fundamental issue like it's it's a it's a costly system to build and you can only make it work financially if you have a large number of users using it within a company um and second thing is for, for us you know we we are connecting you know into all of your enterprise systems and so there are it and security considerations you know where um we need permissions from you know that you know yeah. the administrators within the company will give to us to so that we can connect into those you know different systems so like so that combined like you know the you know and then there were actually quite a few search companies that started around the same time as we did and all of them followed the plg model because that was the only model that was you know fashionable mm-hmm. that was the only one that everybody wanted to do um but it didn't work for those reasons and so the, all the of those companies doesn't work right yeah. you can't as a developer or a sales person download it and it's not connected to your system so how do you yeah and then you know sort of painful like you know you can always you know ask users to connect but mm-hmm. it's it's painful and people won't do it and you know uh, and then once you you know once you're not connected then you will have this complaint that i can't find things in the, you know here so it was so it was so i think like you know people did try plg in this area and it didn't work for them i think for us you know it, it's working but we still like you know it's it's a question that we always have um every year that can we can we get some momentum because plg is a, is a you know is an amazing lead generation you know right. so, you know uh keep it you know like you know channel that you can have you always light up when you say plg yeah so it's a so it's something that you know we would like to do like you know still trying to figure it out 
when did you know you had product market fit at Glean? And what was that moment or that that week when it's like, whoa, okay, do you think we have it? Yeah. Um, so two things, you know, like one, for me, like I always fundamentally believed that we were solving an important problem. And why? Because whoever I go and talk to, you know, they would actually say that, yes, like, you know, I've, you know I, I spend a lot of time trying to find things. It's hard for me. I never met a single person in any company in the world who said this is not a problem for me. Huge problem. Yeah. But at the same time, the, when I try to go and sell to them, almost everybody would say, no, I'm not buying it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because, you know, they, they would say that this is important, but not the most important thing for me. We and you face that? We face that, 100%. Everybody, you know, see by definition, if you think about when you try to do a category creation, you try to build something that people are not used to buying. There is that natural argument, you know, that they have, which is, oh, yeah, like, you know, things are working for me without it. Right? Now I know how to live without it. So when somebody can live without it, it makes your sales very, very hard. So how did you come over that, get over that? So we had to evangelize. First of all, like, you know, our goal was that, hey, like, see, to, to actually create urgency in this market, to actually find buyers. You have to start to first find leaders who are progressive, who want to actually become heroes in their enterprise, want to want to innovate. So we, we worked with the world's best companies, the CIOs there, and, and, and told them that, you know, there, here's an opportunity to do something really meaningful for their company. Yes, you know, this is not a tool, you don't have a budget for this, but this is an opportunity to be you know, forward thinking and make progress. So sort of that's 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 what that's how you appeal. That's that's the argument that you use, you know, with 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 you know with the, with the best leaders, and they understand it. You know, they know that they, they themselves like you know they were also feeling you know feeling the pain, mm -hmm. and so that that's how we started to slowly you know evangelize and build um, you know build our product. And once and you 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 know we have a good product, so people liked it once and you know and they got a lot of love. So actually, you know, a lot of CIOs have come back and told me that. I've not received this much love from my team, you know, in my entire career, right? Because the, the pain was so big and when it actually got solved, you know, they got those kudos. So, so that's how we started. And we still, I would say that, you know, we didn't, we didn't actually, I would not say that we, we did a fantastic job. Like for example, I think we underinvested in marketing. Mm -hmm. And so we were still, you know, you know, basically building this awareness at, at you know, at some pace, we, we should have, you know, we should have done more. Uh, but then we also had macro trends, you know, that help us. So there's, there's something, you know, there's something about, you know, like a large company, like, you know, needs a great team, great people, great product, but also needs luck. And I think for us, you know, we had multiple, you know, macro trends, you know, that you sort of, you know, which you, when you basically keep track of them and see how that, you know, that actually help you. So one of, one of them was actually the shift to distributed work, you know, which was driven by the pandemic. COVID, right. right. So once people started to work from home, you know, like we were able to, like, you know, um, you know, we, we were in this mode where now the CIOs were thinking about how do I enable, like, you know, my people in this new model of working. And when you're alone, you know, at home, there's nobody to go and get help from, uh, a product like Glean became more valuable. So it sort of helped us, uh, that gave us some tailwinds. And then of course AI. So as, as AI technologies were getting better, it gave us this opportunity to, to really like, you know, make use of those technologies and 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 build an amazing product, and which is which now. So like our product evolved from looking like Google inside your work life to looking more like ChatGPT inside your work life, and and so that also helped us quite a bit in terms of like now everybody all all CIOs are trying to actually buy AI products. So you so as a, as a founder as an entrepreneur, you. You look at what the market trends are, what people are looking for, and and you have to make sure that you pitch your product um, to appeal to like you know what's the, what's the need of the hour or the, uh, what people are looking for. So so everybody has to keep evol evolving. One of the things you know that is very interesting that that has happened this year um, because of AI, people are looking for this thing called RAG, right? Right. Retrieval augmented generation. So it's, it's a mouthful. It's a you know. They're looking for a rag. They're not looking for a search engine. I mean, that is really the one really? and the same thing. Interesting. You know, I mean, like if if you think about, I mean, rag is is uh, the you know the the rag engine is actually a search engine, uh, but that's that's a term that you know that has you know basically caught attention this year. 
and <laughs> and people want to build AI applications as part of that. They know RAG is a core part of it, and they want that. Now we were actually we always called our product, you know, with the search engine for work, um, but that's not interesting to people. So we'd now go and and actually. So now you go and say we can. Yeah. So now we have to say we're a RAG engine. RAG engine. Yeah. Oh. So, so, so you have right. to you have to uh, definitely look for like you know like what are the market trends and if you can capitalize on those that is sort of what gives you like you know that extreme momentum. Got it. Uh, let's now maybe just that's a good segue to yeah. start talking about AI. Um, yeah. How have LLMs changed Glean? I mean, when you started, you had BERT for semantic matching. Yes. What, what like what changed with LLMs? Yeah. So we we've, we've been using language models in you know in our product you know since 2019. Um, the you know for those who don't know, this this entire AI trend that we're seeing right now it originated in Google, and the reason these models were built initially were to make search better. That was right. that that's right. why these models were built in the first place. Um, and Google had already put some of these really good models you know the Bird family of models in open domain um, that we could use uh, even in 2018, 2019. So from day one, we've been using these models for semantic matching. The models were not good enough at that time that so you couldn't actually get them to write, for example, sentences, but they would they would they could still understand, you know, conceptually what a document is about um, or what a piece of text is about. So you could do really good semantic matching. You could, you, I could go and ask for a product manual um, for my car, and if the document says it's a user guide, it would, you know, Bert would understand that these two are same things. So, so you sort of were able to use these models behind the scenes in search, in many, you know, in many, many different ways in the in the core search technology. That's how we started, um, and so it allowed us to actually build search, which is which was which is better, which didn't have to be restricted to like you know exact keywords and things like that um, but then you know we saw the clear trend like these models were actually getting better so fast faster than anybody could imagine and i think it was a real at least from for us like you know not keeping up maybe with the market as much we saw a distinct you know shift where there was a there was a moment binary moment where you you saw that oh not you know now you know these models can actually write mm. and they can write coherent stuff and and that's amazing, you know, in, in our product, because our product is all about somebody has a question and we have to answer right. that question. So we saw this opportunity that now we can advance our product just, just the same way as you think about Google versus ChatGPT. You know, we could actually, when somebody came and asked a question, now we could go, go beyond like, you know, just surfacing the relevant information to them. We could actually have AI read it, read that information and generate answers and give it back to users. So, so it's a big enabler for us. So LLMs are actually helping us make our products better. Much better. Um, and, and interestingly, there's also the, the flip side of it. To actually make LLMs work in the enterprise. Uh, so, when, so when ChatGPT came out, everybody, uh, everybody wanted something like that inside their company, and so they want they wanted to train models um, for for your own enterprise, and that proved to be very hard and very difficult. Like nobody, I don't know of any company that has you know big success training large scale models. Companies don't have data, or the data is sort of complicated. You know, it's private. There's security issues, so model training doesn't work. So then, how do you make use of this technology in the in the enterprise? And that's where the racks come in. Um, the the only way to make you know the AI work in your enterprise is to sort of follow this RAG architecture today, which means that you actually search now actually also has become a foundational piece mm. in making AI work. So while search is getting Very better with AI, search is also like you know a fundamental component of how AI can deliver value to the enterprise. So that that actually you know like you know made made us like you know our product even more useful to the enterprises because now it's no longer just an end user product for users. It's actually it's actually an AI platform. Got it. You know moats. Yeah. So, uh, like, how do you think about moats for Glean? And then, yeah. Also, if you're a startup building, you know, early stage startup. Yeah. Trying to build an AI company, how should one think about moats? Yeah. Well, so I have a I have a different take. I don't believe in moats. All I, right. Yeah. Okay. So the 
what I, you know, what I think, and I think this may be different from advice that you get from others. Personally, to me, like, first of all, like, what more do we have, for example, against Google? We've got nothing. They have, you know, you know, 100 times more people, like, you know, all the smart, great people, resources, brand, they have everything. Like, you know, like we, I don't think we have anything, any, any secret sauce, in, in my opinion. I think all we have is a drive and, and a desire to build a product. And building a product is always hard and it takes time. And no matter how large you are, like to actually build a good product, you have to learn from customers. And those learnings, you know, happen over time. They cannot happen instantly. And that's what I think is, is your moat. Is the fact that you actually spend you deeply time. understand your customers. You yeah, and and you deep. spent and you spent like you know five years working on it. Right. We you know in, in those five years as we tried to build a search product, we learned so much about enterprises <coughs> and the challenges that people are going to run into it. So anybody trying to build a search engine right now is going to take them another five years, you know, and you know to actually go and figure those things out. So 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 my belief is you know is you have to. You have, you, you, have to, you have to look at the problem that you're solving, you have to build a product. As long as you build a you know, good product, work hard on it, have a good team, um, you will succeed. Um, so so I, don't, I don't think of like, hey, like, I'm gonna change my product roadmap so that I can have a bigger moat. moat. That's, that's so you don't worry about like data as a moat and all this kind of stuff. So I don't. I don't fits in over time, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, and well, I guess you know, partly because I guess I have a I have a builder mindset. I'm an engineer, so like I don't actually think about like maybe strategic topics, you know, as much. So <laughs> it, might, it might just be my weakness, you know. But but the oh, well, that's great advice. Right? But that's but advice. but at least you know that's how that's how I I think the you know we like you know we don't have this, but but like you know it it, it becomes apparent like you know so now for example, the. Like, you know, the one of the strengths of Glean, of course, is data. That, you know, we have all of this enterprise data that we brought together in one place. And, you know, it's a, it's a hard thing for somebody else to sort of go and build. It'll take them time. So, um, I think what you said, Arvind, which is, yeah. look, if somebody starts from scratch today, yeah. it's going to take them five years. Yeah. That is, you know, you've been working at it for so yeah. long. And I think maybe that's the, you know, this idea of build a product. It takes two years yeah. to build a really deep product. Yeah. That itself, right? Because somebody else starting from scratch is going to have to spend that right. years, and then you're always ahead because you're exactly yeah. okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's open it up. So, uh, uh, how did you go about uh, finding the ICP? Because it's a very horizontal product, right? Everyone in the world can use it. Uh, how do you go about defining? Okay, these are the right set of customer for me, and these are not. Yeah, that's 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 a great question. Actually, in fact, one of the most challenging things for us is you know our product is useful to every single person in every single company you know, in, in the world. So who do you focus on? And so sometimes, you know, this huge market, this huge opportunity actually becomes a liability mm. um, because, you know, you, it can easily make you defocused. Um, so for us, you know, what we chose was first, let's, let's go and target the segment that we understand more. Um, I've worked in technology companies my whole life. So, and I know this is a problem, problem there. So we started with that as our first, you know, uh, vertical. Um, and then within that, you can then think about, do you want to be, you know, large enterprise or mid-market or, or SMBs? Um, we, we picked like, you know, companies around 1,000 people as our, as, our, as our segment because we felt that first they, they can, you know, um, you know, we'll get a good number of users from them. Second, they have a real problem. And third, they actually have money to pay us. Uh, and fourth, they will be agile and fast. So that was, that was the reason, you know, why we chose that as a segment. And then you know, then you, then you grow. Once you reach you know reach some success there, then you start to grow, 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 grow from there. So I have a question about uh, uh, you classify yourself as a rag uh, uh, sort, rag um, mm -hmm. as a sort piece. Uh, so rag is more, from what I see, more on uh, unstructured data. That's yes. that's that's what generally, and I guess in the, primarily the, what you are targeting as well. Yeah. So I'm curious to know about, you know, many enterprises, they have information locking as structured data in mm -hmm. databases, et cetera. Yeah. And uh, uh, when you build uh, on top of that, you have to have more complex concept like uh, uh, knowledge graph and semantic layers, et cetera. Yeah. Um, uh, I would like to know more about if you see this actually happening, uh, there are companies uh, mm -hmm. uh, like, the trend in this direction. Yeah. 
So, so, so you write like enterprises have lots of unstructured data in form of conversations, documents. Um, then there's a semi-structure, a lot of data that has some structure, but some, you know, some like, you know, unstructured parts, for example, tickets or, you know, data and Salesforce. And then there's like, you know, like the real data and databases. Um, Glean will actually connect with all of those, all, all of those pieces of information, whether it's structured or semi-structured uh, or unstructured. And then we'll help you know you leverage AI to provide value on that data. Um, but there are there are a lot of information seeking tasks in enterprises that require you to do complicated analysis on structured data, and that's that's not a business that we are in. I mean, there are companies like you know Snowflake and Databricks and ThoughtSpot and actually many many startups we are seeing that are actually trying to build. Uh, these new AI-based uh, structured data analysis products right now. So there's, there's, there, there are a lot of, lot of them there, yes. So I think enterprise search kind of would have come earlier also because search engines were there earlier. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that this problem was solved now instead of like 20 years later, 20 years and, earlier? And to enterprise search? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, first, you know, it's not solved yet. The, like, you know, we, we, we have long ways to go to actually build a great product ourselves. The um, were there like, a bunch of companies like there, a decade ago. Uh, there were there were there were quite a few companies you know in the early two thousands in enterprise search. They didn't succeed because it was actually partly because I think in the enterprise it was very very hard to get hold of the data. You know they used to be in these custom systems in the pre SaaS world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know or packaged software with like you know twenty five different versions. Um, so like any search company that got built, you know they found it very very hard. To actually build a turn to to build a turnkey product uh, in the past, even Google Google had a product um, like you know actually like you know in fact that product predates even you know the advertising revenue that we got at Google, but it never it never became big because it was just so hard to actually get, get value in, in it. To like only the largest companies in the world basically built an a internal search you know experience, and that was more like engineering exercise, not buying a product. So that those, so there were like you know those technology trends which were which made it hard in the past. Uh, I would say you know cloud, AI, open open like you know uh, open source you know search technologies. Those are some some of the things that actually made it possible now to actually for a startup to solve this you know solve this solve this problem. Yeah. Arvind, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Bini. I'm the co-founder of Project Pro. Uh, we help analytics teams uh, ship faster mm -hmm. by giving them a repository of reusable assets. Mm -hmm. So I have two questions. The first question is, what are people searching for inside enterprises? When you look at the queries, what are the most common yeah. things? And the second question is, in the early days when you're trying to sell, would specific teams come to you asking for customizations to kind of uh, map your search results closer to what they are used to in a Confluence or a SharePoint? And how do you address those customization requests and things like that? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, th I think the what people are looking for lots of different types of things. You know, in, there are some common needs in enterprises, like people looking for, like you know, corporate information, like you know, their benefits or like you know, IT related information. But then different functions have different needs. Um, salespeople will typically try to look for information about customers, like product features. Engineers use Glean a lot to debug problems you know that that they run into so yeah it depends on persona like you know a lot of different, need, different needs and actually it varies a lot you know company to company in terms of customization that's a that's a great question the you know especially like you know once you start to sell to enterprises every enterprise will have you know different requirements and you know um, and 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 it's some like you know a lot of companies struggle to sort of you know meet you know the demands of their customers because they're bringing revenue and but they're taking a product in one direction other companies taking it in another direction. So you have to have that discipline and confidence to sort of tell them no. I think, you know, I, I also struggle, like, you know, my team, like my product team actually constantly tells me that I keep saying, you know, yes to all my customers uh, for things that they want. So the, yeah, I think, I think you just have to maintain a good balance where you, you know, where enterprises feel that, yes, you know, you are, you know, they have an influence on your roadmap, but at the same time you build something which is, you know, you, you, like I think, like if you make this rule that you're not going to actually have any lines of code in your system, you know, which is meant for one customer. There should be only one release, one binary, one system. Um, you know, you will take requests from them, you know, but but then sort of combine them 
into a common set of uh, features that will help multiple customers and then go back to them. So that's sort of like, you know, just striking a balance is, is important there. Hi, Arvind. I'm Nikunj, co-founder at Foundry. We're building an ML platform for developers. The question is that Glean is building, let's say, a managed search experience for enterprises, right? You yeah. plug all your data in and you yeah. get like one final search box out. Yeah. We are also seeing pockets of developers trying to build out more specific search experience for some specialized data sets where yeah. like, you know, they have some JSON where they have to build out some parser, they have some PDFs with charts and tables, etc. Do you see a lot of that happening? And is Glean trying to support that or that falls outside of the scope? Like how do, how do you think about that ecosystem? Yeah. So, so, so certainly like there are a lot of needs for businesses are trying to build AI applications mm. <clears throat> um, for specific workflows that they have. For example, in a business, an HR team, they won't actually uh, bring AI as the first responder in their, let's say, HR help channel in Slack. So, so they have this need, you know, they don't want like a, you know, a search uh, or a, um, you know, assistant that actually answers questions using all of your company knowledge. They want this first responder to work only on that specific, you know, curated HR information that they wrote right. and use that to answer questions. So there's, there's, there's a lot of demand for the search, like in specific, smaller, you know, sort of constrained environment within, within enterprises. And so we, we do allow that, you know, using our, using our AI platform. So you can take, uh, take Glean and create, you know, these different applications for each one of those specific functional needs. So Arvind, thank you so much for coming. Oh. Uh, we know you're super, super busy and we wish you all the best so that every enterprise in the world can find whatever they're looking for. Let's give yeah. uh, Arvind a round of applause. Thank you.